Hi, this lecture is on Carini bacterium diphtheriae. Our intention is to provide a quick learning experience for those in preparation for the USMLE Step 1. Let's get started. Important properties. Carini bacteria are gram-positive rods that appear club-shaped, wider at one end, and are arranged in V or L-shaped formations. The rods have a beaded appearance. The beads consist of granules of highly polymerized polyphosphate, a storage mechanism for high-energy phosphate bonds. The granules stain metachromatically. For example, a dye that stains the rest of the cell blue will stain the granules red. They are pleomorphic, or have variability in shape and size, and are non-motile and non-spore-forming. Transmission. Human children are the only natural host of Carini bacterium diphtheriae. Both toxigenic and non-toxigenic organisms reside in their upper respiratory tract and are transmitted by airborne droplets. The organism can also infect the skin at the site of a pre-existing skin lesion. This occurs by poor skin hygiene. Pathogenesis. Exotoxin production is essential for pathogenesis. AB exotoxin encoded by a bacteriophage inhibits protein synthesis by ADP ribosylation of elongation factor 2, which leads to cell death. Subunit B helps bind the bacteriophage to cardiac and neural tissue for cell entry. Upon entry, subunit A integrates into the bacterial chromosome and the toxin is synthesized. Carini bacterium diphtheriae cells that are not lysogenized by this bacteriophage do not produce exotoxin and are non-pathogenic. Clinical findings. Diphtheria is rare in the United States. Its most prominent sign is a thick, gray membrane over the tonsils and throat. Other signs are fever, sore throat, and cervical endopathy. There are three prominent complications. Number one, extension of the membrane to the larynx and trachea causing airway obstruction. Number two, myocarditis accompanied by arrhythmias and circulatory collapse. Nerve weakness or paralysis, especially of the cranial nerves, as well as peripheral neuritis affecting the muscles of the extremities also occurs. Cutaneous diphtheria causes ulcerating skin lesions covered by a gray membrane. In the United States, cutaneous diphtheria occurs primarily in people with poor skin hygiene, such as the indigent. Laboratory diagnosis. Laboratory diagnosis involves both isolating the organism and demonstrating toxin production. A throat swab should be cultured on Leffler's medium, a tellurite plate, and blood agar plate. Smears of the throat swab can be stained with both gram stain and methylen blue. Pleomorphic gram positive rods can be suggestive. The methylen blue stain is excellent for revealing the typical metachromatic granules. Treatment. The treatment of choice is antitoxin. The toxin binds rapidly and irreversibly to cells and once bound cannot be neutralized by antitoxin. Treatment with penicillin G or an erythromycin is recommended also but neither is a substitute for antitoxin. Immunization consists of three doses given at two, four, and six months of age, with boosters at one and six years of age. Thank you for joining this lecture.